how about a drink? I'm dying of thirst. Come on, you can be human, can't you? to shoot him. I didn't want to hurt him. Take it easy, son. How is he, Tonto? Him dead, Kimasabi. Dead? Oh, but he can't be. I was just trying to get away. We saw part of the fight. Considering these, I wouldn't call it a fair one. Who, who are you? Tonto and I were just passing by. If you tell us what happened, maybe we can help you. But your mask. You would not be afraid. Sometimes mask hide face a good friend. Now you tell. Why your hands tied? Why you fight Indian? All right, I... I guess I could use a couple of friends. You said you were trying to get away from this Indian. Where was he taking you? To join Buck Fargo's gang. Buck Fargo? Worst outlaw in the territory. Uh, what Buck Fargo want with a boy like you? I guess he figured I was worth a lot of money to him. Now, how are you worth money to Buck Fargo? Did you ever hear of Wayne Baxter? I guess everybody has. He owns about 20 banks, doesn't he? 22. More than any other man in the state. What's your tie-up with Wayne Baxter? Well, I'm his son, Terry. Well, that makes more sense now. Do you think you're part of plan so Buck Fargo can rob your father's bank? From what I found out this morning, Indian, I'm not part of the plan. I'm the whole plan. Sit down, Terry. Supposing you tell us exactly what did happen. Well, first of all, this Indian, Black Eagle, I've seen him around town before. He'd do odd jobs for Thad Kendall, Dad's chief assistant. I always thought Thad was a good friend of mine until this morning when he came over to our house. I was just finishing breakfast. My brother Glenn was out at our ranch with the cattle roundup, and Dad had just left for the bank when I heard this knocking at the back door. It was Thad Kendall. I couldn't understand what he wanted so early. He asked if anybody else was home but me, and when I said no, he said that was fine because I was the one he'd come to see. That was when he signaled for Black Eagle to come in. I still couldn't figure out what he wanted. And all of a sudden, Black Eagle grabbed me from behind, and Thad pulled out some rope and started tying me up. I fought as hard as I could to get away, but I couldn't do a thing against the two of them. And then all of a sudden, Thad gives me a look like he's hated me all his life, and belts me one across the face as hard as he can. Gee, Thad, what did you do that for? Just gratifying a long-time ambition, my boy. Think you can handle him? Mm. I don't get this, Thad. What'll Dad think? You've been his friend for 20 years. Do you want to lose your job just before you're retired? Yeah, 20 years. And what have I got to show for it? A few measly thousands in savings. Oh, no, my boy. When I retire, I'm going to be a rich man, thanks to your father's generosity. You understand what you're to do now? Mm -hmm. Here's the map Buck Fargo drew for me. You follow it, you should reach his hideout by noon. Buck Fargo! That's right, my boy. A banker's son should have a lot in common with a bank robber. He's never robbed one of Dad's banks. He knows they're too well guarded. I think perhaps your father will remove the guards when he hears you're riding with the Fargo gang. Me? Ride with the Buck Fargo gang? My dad would never fall for that. Possibly not. But that won't bring his precious son back to him. Unless he follows orders. I hope you sold out for a good big price, Thad. When Buck Fargo makes a deal with he always pays well. Take him along. Take hey, you him can't out. do it! And that's the whole story. We've been riding ever since, the Indian and me. A perfect setup for Fargo. And just as ruthless as all his other jobs. Well, I'm sure glad you two happened along. I might have been lost out here for days with my hands tied like they were. Well, Dad will be mighty grateful to you for bringing me back. Yes, I guess he will. Terry, I'm wondering just how brave you are. Well, what do you mean? Well, Buck Fargo is the cleverest outlaw in this territory. No one has ever been able to trap him. I think with your help, we might be able to do it. Gee, mister, there's nothing I'd like better. All right, then listen. This Indian said Fargo had never seen him before. That means any Indian who takes you to his hideout could be Black Eagle. Yeah. 
And if Tonto were to take me there... He'd have the run of the camp. He could get enough evidence against Fargo to keep him in jail for life. Then he could sneak you out of there before Fargo was any the wiser. And that good plan, Kimasami. But what about danger to Boy? Not too great, Tonto. The whole success of Fargo's scheme depends upon him keeping Terry alive. It's your life that'll be in danger. That is, if he suspects that you're not Black Eagle. Well, gee, I'm game if you are, Tonto. We'd be helping the whole territory if we could trap the Fargo gang. Good. We go, then. Where you be? I'll see Terry's father right away. Fargo will have to contact him to let him know Terry's a prisoner. I'll try and dig up some evidence of my own. Hey, Thad gave Black Eagle a map. Here it is. Good. I'll make a copy of it. Then you two be on your way. Glenn! Glenn, are you up there? Yeah. Come down, will you? Now, take it easy, Wayne. I'm sure nothing's the matter. What is it, Dad? Have you seen Terry this afternoon? No, not since early this morning. I was wondering why he wasn't here. Is something the matter? I don't know. He was supposed to meet me at the bank right after school, but there was no sign of him. And Thad says he saw Terry riding out of town this morning with some strange Indian. An Indian? Yes, I'd have asked him where he was going if I'd suspected anything was wrong, but they seem to be perfectly good friends. I don't understand it. Terry doesn't know any Indians. Stop worrying, Dad. The kid will probably show up in time for supper. I don't like it. Terry's never run off before without letting me know where I could find him. Well, look, if it will relieve your mind any, I'll make some inquiries around town. Good, Thad. Maybe I can find somebody who knows who this Indian is. Thanks, Thad. You're a real friend. Wayne, you know I'd do anything for you. I wouldn't worry about Terry, Mr. Baxter. I know where he is. Put up your hands, outlaw. You don't need that gun, Glenn. I'm here to help you. I'm telling you for the last time, mister. Put up your hands or I'll shoot. It won't do you much good, Glenn. I was afraid you might misunderstand my mask, so I took the precaution of unloading that rifle. What do you want with me? First of all, your trust. Why should we trust a man who wears a mask? This gun is really loaded. If you still think I'm an outlaw after I'm finished talking, you can use it on me. I don't get this. You said you know where Terry is. Where? On his way to join the Buck Fargo gang. Now I know you're a liar. My son would never join up with an outlaw gang. He's never done anything to make me ashamed of him. What he's doing now should make you very proud of him, sir. He wrote this note to you. I think it'll explain a lot. Yeah? Here's that injury to that kid you've been waiting for, Buck. So you're a black eagle. May bring boy like Mr. Kendall promised. Did you have any trouble grabbing him? Plenty easy. Him not suspect Mr. Kendall. Him not put up much fight. Well, how could I, you sneaking redskin, when it was two against one? Kendall told me all about your rotten flying Fargo, and it isn't going to work. Isn't it? Maybe this will teach you to have respect for me. And better you not hit him. Him plenty weak from journey. What's the matter, Redskin? Are you getting soft for the kid? Boy mean nothing to me. But him no good to you if him dead or hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was forgetting. I want to keep Junior here good and healthy, don't I? Healthy enough to ride with us when we rob his father's banks. You'll never get me to do that. If you're not careful, kid, I'm going to forget about your health. Get him out of here. Keep him in the next room. I'm putting him in your charge. You seem to know how to handle him. Me take good care of boy. Now we got the kid. When are we going to action? Just as soon as I've had a nice, quiet little talk with this old man. I wish Glenn would get back from the sheriff's office. I'll feel better when I know there's a posse standing by if we need it. You're over anxious, Mr. Baxter. Take it easy. How can I? Fargo's had plenty of time to contact me if he's really got Terry. Are you sure you can trust that Indian friend of yours? Don't worry. Tana will take good care of your boy. I still think we should follow that map of yours to Fargo's hideout. And play right into his hands? It's better we let him come to us. That way we're the ones that can set the trap. 
But this plan of his to rob my banks, I can never let him get away with it. Not even for Terry's sake. Why, I'd be betraying my depositors. You only pretend to, Mr. Baxter. If everything works out right, Fargo will be caught before he can touch a dollar. Wait a minute. Isn't that your friend, Mr. Kendall, coming down the street? Oh, yes. Yes, that's Thad. But who's the big fellow with him? Unless I miss my guess, that's the great Buck Fargo himself. I'd better wait upstairs. And don't forget, you're a frantic father. You don't know what's become of your boy. Don't worry, I'm frantic enough without pretending. Thad. Thad, have you found any trace of Terry? I think I have, Wayne. This gentleman came to the bank a little while ago looking for you. He says he knows where Terry is. You do? Tell me quickly. Not so fast, mister. What I gotta say is private. Get rid of this pipsqueak. Pipsqueak? I don't understand, Wayne, why he was polite as pie at the bank. Look, if it's money you want, I'll give it to you, any amount. Just tell me where my boy is. Like I say, I'll do my talking when we're alone. Run along, Thad. But do you think it's safe? I must find out where Terry is. Now, please, please go. Sure, Wayne, sure. That's more like it. Now we can get down to business. My boy, where is he? He's safe enough, Mr. Baxter. Ain't nobody gonna arm a hair on his head, unless you force him to. Now, uh, here's my proposition. Hey, how'd it go? Like money in the bank. The old boy's as meek as a mouse. He agreed to the holdup? He's going to help us unlock the doors himself, personal. But you sure he won't try a double cross, have the law waiting to trap you? He won't dare. I told him Black Eagle would be riding hurt on the kid with orders to shoot to kill if there's even a smell of a double cross. Sounds perfect, Buck. Oh, say, speaking of Black Eagle, I got something for you to give him. What do you mean? Well, you know these Indians, superstitious, the whole lot of them. Well, Black Eagle Squaw was in this morning, said he'd gone off without wearing his special good luck charm. Said he'd never reach his destination alive unless he had it on. He wouldn't reach that alive, huh? He was plenty alive when I last saw him. <laughs> well, you better give it to him anyway. It's just some kind of a ring. And say, I'll be around after the holdup to collect my share. We should get away with plenty, huh? With Baxter helping us? <laughs> How can we lose? <laughs> hey, Finch. Bring Black Eagle and that kid in here. I want to talk to him. Right, Buck. What happened? Nothing to worry about. Baxter's playing right along with us. Now, yeah, Dad would never do that. You be quiet. Listen to Big Boss. That's right, Black Eagle. Don't let him forget who is boss. When do we pull the job? Tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock sharp. Baxter will fix it so that everyone's gone but himself. We'll make it look like he's the one been held up. How you know him not try double cross? That's where you come in, Black Eagle. You and the kid are gonna ride with us. I've warned the old man that you'll have a gun on the boy every second. I think that'll make him keep his end of the bargain. Me keep gun ready. You not worry. He's doing a good job, Black Eagle. There's plenty in it for you, too. All right, you can take the kid out now. Uh, you move pronto. Uh, wait a minute. Almost forgot. I got something for you. Uh, what that? Coming away without your favorite good luck charm? You had your squaw scared to death. Uh, which finger do you wear it on? Uh, it not matter much. All right, I'll uh, put it on this one. Guess that's the wrong finger. <laughs> that's strange, Black Eagle. A good luck charm that doesn't even fit. Uh, me not wear ring for a long time. Fingers thinner now. Yeah, that's not what your squaw told Thad Kendall. She says you're never without it. Buck, you don't think this Indian is? I don't think I know. This redskin's not Black Eagle. Just who are you, Indian? You think me bring boy of me not Black Eagle? You might, if you had a good enough plan to back it up. But it don't make sense, Buck. If this Indian is on the side of the law, why would he play into our hands like this? So we can play into his a little later. Don't you see? We've set things up perfect for him. When we leave for the hold up tomorrow, he don't keep his gun on the boy. He helps him escape. We ride right into an ambush. I think you're right. I'm sure I am. Now, answer my questions. Who are you? Who are you working with? Do you not have right to hit Black Eagle? Yeah. You're right. 
I have no right to hit Black Eagle since he ain't even here. But I have every right to kill you for trying to double-cross me. And that's just what I'm going to do, unless you talk. All right, if that's the way you want it. Tonto, you've got to tell him. Tonto? So that's who you are. What's so special about an Indian named Tonto? Nothing much except that he's the sidekick of a man I've been wanting to get for years. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? You'll never get him. With you as paid Indian, you know he'd do anything to save your life. Even take orders from me. What about the bank hold up tomorrow? It'll go off on schedule, and there'll be no ambush to stop it. Because I'm heading to town first thing in the morning to make a deal with the Lone Ranger. Is everything all set? We just saw the sheriff. He's going to cooperate right down the line. Fine. He'll have the whole bank surrounded, Dad. When Fargo and his gang show up, they'll ride in the deadliest ambush you ever saw. But are you sure Terry will be all right? Don't worry. We can rely on Tano, and it. Hold on. That's Buck Fargo riding up. The holdup's not supposed to be till this afternoon. Something must have gone wrong. We'll find out soon enough. Then we'll wait upstairs. If Fargo tries any tricks, it's better we take him by surprise. Right. See what he wants. We'll be listening. Howdy, Baxter. I reckon you wasn't expecting me so soon. What's the matter? Has anything happened to Terry? Of course not. I promised her he wouldn't get hurt, so long as you played the game my way. Then why are you here? I came to get someone. Who? The man who calls himself the Lone Ranger. The, uh, the Lone Ranger? Don't play coy with me, Baxter. You know who I mean. Where's he hiding, Baxter? Upstairs? What makes you think he's here? Because your kid told me. Yeah, and I know about the Indian, too. That would have been a smart trick if it had worked. Listen, you, Lone Ranger, or whatever you call yourself, I'm holding your friend Tonto a prisoner in my hideout. I've left orders if I'm not back by noon sharp. With you riding ahead of me, the Indian's to be shot dead. Do you hear me? I hear you, Fargo. What guarantee have I that you won't kill Tonto if I do go with you? You got my word, mister. Ain't that good enough? I guess it'll have to be. You win, Fargo. I'm coming down. Be sure to keep your hands good and high when you do. And leave your guns upstairs. So you're the fabulous Lone Ranger. The man that no one could catch. Let's have a look at you. I've heard a lot of outlaws describe you, but not one had ever seen your face. Never imagined I'd be the lucky one. Nothing wrong with that face. You're foolish, mister, to hide it behind the mask. Here, I wouldn't want you to catch cold. Now get this straight, Baxter. I don't know what kind of a plan you and the Sombre have cooked up, but you're calling it off. My gang will ride in to rob your bank this afternoon right on time. Only change is I won't be with them. And neither will the kid or the masked man and the engine. I'll have them hidden away in a nice, safe place. If my men come back with what they went after, nobody will get hurt. If they don't, you're going to find three awful dead bodies in the road. Now get going! Hi, Buck. <laughs> Hello, Finch. Ah. Take a look. The great Lone Ranger, crawling like any snake. He sure looks natural down there, don't he? <laughs> hey, those two give you any trouble? Trouble? The way I got them strung up? Hey, where's the gang going? I just sent them off. They'll be at the bank at 4 o'clock. There'll be no ambush, no posse to stop them. We just sit tight till they bring the money back. Thanks to our friend here falling into his own trap, Buck, I sure got ahead of you the way you captured that Lone Ranger all by yourself. When do I get to see his pretty face? Well, I reckon I ought to get a dollar look, but uh, seeing as you, Finch. <laughs> Come on, get up, get up, you. He's 
Not the Lone Ranger, Fargo. We're fine now, Kimasabi, but you give us big scare. We have to beat Fargo's gang to town. All the sheriff wants is proof that Terry's alive and he'll ambush the lot of them. Well, then let's get going. As soon as we take care of Buck. You had me worried for a while, friend, when I saw Glenn come down those stairs wearing your outfit and that old Halloween mask of Terry's. You'll have to admit it turned out for the best, though, Mr. Baxter. What else can I do? With Fargo and his gang locked up in jail, including that double-dealing friend of mine, Thad Kendall, I sure hate being deceived in a man. Never mind, Dad. You lost one friend and found two better ones. Come on, fellow. Hey, where are you going? Trying to pick jobs ahead. West full of Buck Fargos. We go look for more. Yes, Glenn. Our work isn't done until all the Buck Fargos are behind bars. Adios. Gee, Dad, this is something I won't ever forget. And you know who that masked man really is? Uh, no, son. Uh, who is he? Couldn't you tell? He's the Lone Ranger. I don't feel